On a couple of my videos since the launch of the Pi 5 last year, I've seen people say that for the price of a Pi 5 or some of the RK3588 SPCs I've shown, you should just get an Intel N100 based mini PC, citing better video encoding and decoding performance, better OS support, more memory and storage options, and additional PCIe lanes as advantages over the Pi 5. So today we're going to compare the two and see whether an N100 mini PC is a better option and what the limitations of each of them are. For those of you who don't know what an N100 PC is, it's a PC, often in a mini PC form factor, that is built around Intel's Alder Lake N family, and in this case the N100 CPU. For a long time, Raspberry Pis have been substantially cheaper than any newly available Intel hardware, but Pis have since crept up in price and this series of processors are now cheap and efficient enough to close that gap to the point where they're now becoming quite comparable. For testing, I'm going to be using these two setups. The Pi 5 is an 8 gig variant, and I'm going to be running it with the Pi Moroni NVMe base and a Lexar 500 gig NVMe SSD. The Pi 5 with an official active cooler and power supply, along with the NVMe base and a storage drive, comes to a total of $160. The N100 PC I've chosen is the B-Link Mini S12 Pro. This was on special when I bought it, so it was one of the cheapest options available on Amazon at the time, coming in at $159. There were two cheaper options for $154 and $155, but I didn't recognize either of the brands, and I've used B-Link products before without any issues, so I was happy to pay the extra $5. So pricing between the two is really similar once you've added the required components to the Pi, and with the N100, we're getting double the RAM and an enclosure. In terms of basic specifications, the Pi 5 has a Broadcom BCM2712 SoC. This has a 4-core ARM A76 processor running at up to 2.4 GHz. It's also got a Video Core 7 GPU. The N100 PC has a 4-core Alder Lake N processor running only Intel E cores at up to 3.4 GHz. It's also got integrated UHD graphics. Both of these computers have DDR4 RAM. The Pi 5 has 8 gigs and the N100 PC has 16 gigs. But notably, the Pi 5 is running at 4,267 megatransfers per second, and the N100 PC is at a slower 3,200 megatransfers per second. In terms of storage, both have a 500 gig NVMe SSD. They have similar connectivity options, both having Gigabit Ethernet, two HDMI ports, and four USB ports, although two on the Pi are USB 2.0, instead of all four being USB 3.0, like on the N100 PC. They both have an M.2 port for an NVMe drive, but the N100 also has a SATA port for a 2.5-inch drive, and the Pi has a couple of other interfaces, like dual four-lane camera and display transceivers, and a 40-pin GPIO header, although we'll discuss this in a bit more detail later. The Pi 5 has a single PCIe lane that can run at Gen 3 speeds. The N100 PC has a built-in M.2 port which makes use of two PCIe lanes also running at Gen 3 speeds, so we'd expect the storage speed on the N100 PC to be quite a lot faster than on the Pi. Perhaps the most significant difference between the two is that the N100 is an Intel x86 based system while the Pi 5 is an ARM based system, so you've got far more options for compatible operating systems on the N100 PC. To make testing fair, we'll be running Ubuntu on both, since Ubuntu Desktop 24.4 is available as an officially supported OS through Raspberry Pi Imager and is available for the N100 Mini PC as well. To compare the performance of the two, we're going to run a series of tests. First I'll show you video playback at 1080p, then we'll run a Sysbench CPU benchmark, then test the NVMe storage speed, then run a GLMark 2 benchmark to test graphics performance, and lastly we'll look at power consumption. These should give us a pretty good idea of the capabilities and limitations of each system. Let's start with video playback at 1080p. The Pi 5 struggled with this more than I expected. It stuttered badly and dropped a significant number of frames at the beginning. Even once playback settled, it still continued to drop frames. From experience, the Pi 5 handles video playback in Pi OS, which is based on Debian, without any issues. So this is most likely a software issue.
The N100 PC had no problem playing back 1080p video. Playback was smooth right from the start and was unaffected running in the window or in full screen. So both can handle 1080p video playback, but the N100 PC is clearly much better at it. Next let's run a Sysbench CPU benchmark. I ran three tests on each and then averaged the scores. The Pi 5 managed an average score of 40,359. The N100 PC managed an average score of 44,058. So the N100 PC was about 9% faster than the Pi 5. This is not as significant as expected, given the much higher clock speeds on the N100's cores. But there is a small CPU performance gap between the two. To test the NVMe storage speed, I used James Chambers' Pi Benchmark script. This script favours better random read-write performance, so it's a good representation of how an operating system would make use of the drive. Over three tests, the Pi 5 managed an average score of 32,089, with average sequential read speeds of 423 megabytes per second and average sequential write speeds of 241 megabytes per second. The N100 PC managed an average score of 44,803, so significantly higher than the Pi 5, with an almost 40% improvement. Average sequential reads were around 673 megabytes per second, and average writes 495 megabytes per second. The N100 has a much more powerful GPU, so I expect it to do a lot better than the Pi in our GL Mark II GPU benchmark. The Pi 5 managed a score of 307. The N100 PC managed a score of 2070. So the N100 is over 6.5 times faster than the Pi 5 in GL Mark II, which is obviously a substantial difference. Lastly, let's look at power consumption. This is where I have high hopes for the Pi to stand out. At idle, this Pi setup uses around 3 to 4 watts, and this goes up to 5 to 7 watts under load. The N100 PC uses quite a lot more power, using 8 watts while idle on the desktop, and up to 27 watts under load. While neither of these figures are particularly high, it's worth noting that the N100 uses nearly four times the power of the Pi 5. This probably makes little difference on mains, but for battery-powered projects that are required to run for many hours or even a few days, the difference can lead to substantial savings in power supply hardware and batteries. This is not all that surprising. ARM computers are known to be more power efficient, which is one of the reasons why they're so popular for mobile devices. So the N100 PC beats the Pi in almost every performance benchmark, and comes in at a similar cost. But one of the main reasons that people list for getting a Pi over an N100 PC is the GPIO pins. And this is without question much easier on the Pi. The GPIO pins are literally available right on the board, and there's a wealth of software and tutorials available to use them. But you're also not out of options for the N100 PC. Microcontrollers like an Arduino Pro Mini, or even one of these purpose-built Adafruit USB to GPIO breakout boards, make it equally possible to connect tiny OLED displays, read in information from sensors, or just work through an introductory flashing LED tutorial on a PC, all with relative ease. This is not as integrated as it is on the Pi, and comes at an additional cost. But for a few dollars, it might be worth it if you're just getting started tinkering with electronics. So if you plan on using the computer for automation or robotics projects with a reliance on GPIO pins, then the Pi 5 is the better option. But for experimenting with home server projects, running anything reliant on the GPU, or getting started with Docker or Kubernetes, then the N100 PC is a great alternative. I think Raspberry Pi have missed the mark a little with the pricing of the Pi 5. If you're just looking for a cheap computer to get into tinkering with electronics projects, then you're probably better off going with the base version of the Pi 4. This still has plenty of CPU power to run projects locally, and you'll have access to a similar set of I.O. to the Pi 5, but without the additional cost. After all, a big part of the initial attraction to the Raspberry Pi was the $35 base price. Let me know which you prefer and what your use case is in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials, and reviews.